All right, so you guys want to learn how to edit like the two time, the dock, the violent speed and momentum himself. Well, that's what I'm here to do. So get ready because here's four effects that you're going to love. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Jacques Orgy Q, and today we're going to be covering how to edit like Dr. Disrespect. Now, I've already made one of these videos in the past, but seeing how is it's the most popular video on my entire channel, I figured I'd make a part two. Especially because Doc has an insane amount of effects that I can just sit here and cover all day. By the way, I'm thinking about making a part three, and it's definitely not going to be that, like, the where all the screens are fading on at the very beginning of all his live streams, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it yet. We're going to figure out, though. Trust me. And if you haven't already, after this video, make sure to go check out that past video that I made about how to edit, like, Dr. Disrespect. I cover how to make his text, uh, some speed ramping, a couple transitions, and a few other things but before we hop into the actual effects of this video make sure to hit that like button and subscribe i cover a lot of content on this channel that's focused on helping you guys make content the way that you want to make it now for the effects that we're going to be covering in this video it's going to be four transitions those of which being this flash transition the zoom warp transition a zoom shake transition and then lastly we're going to be covering a speed ramp all right let's quit wasting time the first transition is going to be this flash transition which is pretty simple to do so let's hop in premiere and get this thing going all right, so for this effect, I have some stock lens flare footage that I'm going to be using. I'm going to leave a link down in the description below to the one that I'm using, but I don't know the exact one that Doc uses in his videos because it can literally be anything, just a random video off the internet or something he personally made. But the way he does that effect is what we're going to cover. And once you're done, you're going to have something that's pretty similar to what he has. But essentially what you're going to do is get some stock lens flare footage, and then you're going to start off where your lens flare is kind of on screen here. Like if you look in our preview window, you can see it's glowing a little bit. And then as you go on through the clip, you can see it glows, it glows, it gets brighter. We have our lens flare that's basically covering up the entire part of our screen. And this is where your two clips are going to meet and the actual transition happens. But you keep going throughout this lens flare footage. And then that lens flare kind of goes off the of screen and it starts to fade back to black. So to begin this effect, what we're going to want to do is find that middle of the transition, basically roughly about here where that flash is taking up all the screen. Left click that spot where our playhead is and then move it to where our mouse is roughly where these two clips meet. It doesn't have to be exact, but something around there. Next, select our stock footage and then go to the effects controls on the top left and change our blend mode to screen. Once you do this, it'll get rid of all that black background and then it'll fade nicely in with your clip. So here you go, here's that flash transition we just made. Like I said, it's not exactly what Doc has because I don't know the lens flare that he uses, but it's pretty similar. And it's the exact like process he goes through to get this effect. Next up is gonna be the zoom warp transition. It's not too bad to do, just a little bit more difficult than the past one, but let's go ahead and get this one started. So to start this effect, you're gonna wanna go down to your project files in the bottom left corner of your screen, right click and go to new item and then add in an adjustment layer. Go ahead and hit okay. Grab that adjustment layer and then add it onto your timeline. And then just cut this down to however long you want your transition to be. Roughly about here is going to be good for me. Now let's go ahead and go to the effects in the top right. And we're going to look up an effect called Transform. You're going to find it under Distort and then drag that on top of that adjustment layer. Next, we're going to be looking for an effect called VR Blur. Go ahead and drag that on top of the adjustment layer too. Next up is going to be Lens Distortion. Now there's a lot of options here, but to get rid of all of them, just hit this little arrow next to Lens Distortion Removal. Then it'll get rid of all of them. And you're going to see under Video Effects Distort, there's this Lens Distortion that we're actually going to need. So grab that onto the adjustment layer, it goes. And lastly, we're going to look for an effect called VR Chromatic Aberrations. And it's going to be under Immersive Video. And once you've moved all those onto your adjustment layer, go ahead and go to the effects controls on the top left. Then we're going to minimize all these effects so we have something a little bit cleaner to look at here. And I've gone ahead and moved around these effects but you can just adjust them however you want well, we're going to start with lens distortion so to begin you're going to move your playhead to where the two clips meet on the timeline then you're going to go to curvature and hit the stopwatch next to that and then change your curvature value to negative 65. next move your playhead all the way to the beginning and then change that curvature value to zero Next, you're going to make a duplicate, so hold your Alt key, left click, and drag it to the end of your uh, adjustment layer here. After that, we're going to click this Fill Alpha box, and then we're going to be done with Lens Distortion. Now, for the Chromatic Aberration, we're going to be messing with Aberration Red, Aberration Blue, and the Fall Off Distance. So go ahead and hit the stopwatch next of all of those, and then also check the Fall Off Invert box. Next, we're going to change all these animated values to zero. Then you're going to move your playhead to where these two clips meet on your timeline, and you're going to change your Aberration Red value to 50 your aberration blue value to negative 50, and then your fall off distance to 50. After we've done that, go ahead and left click and select all these first keyframes. Hold Alt on your keyboard, left click and make the duplicate at the end. And that's gonna be it for the chromatic aberrations. Also watch out here, cause I just noticed that my keyframes are actually a little bit to the left here. We're gonna want those lined up with that top, uh, with that top lens distortion and the like actual transition of the clips. All right, yeah, so funny thing guys, whenever I was going back through and editing this video, 
I was looking at this effect and I felt that it wasn't exactly how Doc uses it in his videos. So I came back and I tweaked it a little bit. So what I did was I came in and I added a second lens distortion with the exact same values as the first one. And then I also swapped out the VR blur for a directional blur. Now for this directional blur, I did add an ellipse mask to it. And if you look in the preview window, it's pretty wide here. And essentially I just put the squares at the edge of the preview window. Then I came down to the mask feather and I had a zero keyframe value at the very beginning. Then I animated it into basically to where the peak of our lens distortion chromatic aberrations is. I added a 800 mask feather to it. Then as we came down to the end of the adjustment layer, I added another zero keyframe. Next, I came down and I made sure this mask was inverted. After that, I added a negative 45 degree direction angle to it. And then I also animated the blur length a little bit. So at the very beginning, I have a zero keyframe. Uh, at the middle of the transition, I have a 75 blur length. And at the very end, I have a zero keyframe. And that's all I did basically to change this effect and make it look a bit more like Doc has it in his videos. Lastly, we're gonna move on to transform. Now for this transform, we're only gonna be messing with the scale. So what you're gonna go ahead and do is make sure that your playhead is where these two clips are meeting here. Go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to scale and then change this value to 300. Then move your playhead all the way to the beginning. Hit this reset keyframe button to get back to zero, or I mean back to 100. Then grab your playhead and go to the end of the adjustment layer and do the same thing. Now once you've done this, hit the little arrow next to scale to get this drop down menu for the velocity. And what you're gonna do is just kind of tweak one of these lines really quickly. And then you're gonna go back to this top line and basically make it to where your line is pointing down kind of sharply here, but also pretty short too. And then you're gonna mirror it over here on the right side. And then once you're done, your line should look roughly about like this. All right, then here you go. Here's that zoom warp transition. Like I said, it's not too difficult. Just a couple of little effects we have to mess with. Next up is gonna be the zoom shake transition, which is about the same as far as difficulty goes. So let's go ahead and hop into the next one. All right, now to begin, you're gonna to wanna to take some adjustment layers and lay them out roughly about like this. And for example, the length of these adjustment layers is let's see, if we can go to the beginning of our adjustment layer, hit the I key and then go to the end and hit the O key. If you look here in the time code in your preview window, uh, from our in and our out, we have about a 0.1 second uh, adjustment layer. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and add in our effects, first of which being transform. We're gonna take transform and add it onto the left adjustment layer and the top right adjustment layer. After that, we're gonna look for an effect called directional blur. We're gonna drag that on top of that left adjustment layer. Next, we're gonna look for VR chromatic aberrations again and drag that on top of that top right adjustment layer. Then we've only had two more effects we have to get, so let's go ahead and look for one called replicate. You can find that under stylized down here and then drag that onto that bottom right adjustment layer. And then lastly, we're gonna look for an effect called mirror. Under distort, take that and then drag it onto that bottom right adjustment layer four times. All right, and I know we just added a lot of effects in here, but trust me, it's not that bad. So to begin, we're gonna go ahead and get an easy one out of the way. Go down to this bottom right adjustment layer, go to the effects controls in the top left, and then change your replicate value to three. After you've done that, we're gonna mess with these mirrors, but to save you guys some time and not have to listen to me ramble off a bunch of numbers, here are the values you plug in, and basically this is what your effects controls is gonna look like. And once you've plugged in those values, that's gonna be it for that adjustment layer. So now we can move on to this left adjustment layer. And to begin, go ahead and move your playhead to where these two clips meet, then go to the effects controls in the top left, scroll down a little bit, and we're gonna move transform under directional blur for now. And then go to directional blur, you're gonna change your direction to negative 45, and then change your blur length to 15. After you've done that, go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to blur length, then move your playhead roughly about this area here and then change this blur length value to zero. Then you're gonna hold your alt key, left click, and then drag this keyframe all the way to the end to make another zero keyframe. And that's gonna be it for the directional blur. So we can go ahead and minimize that and move down to transform. Now for transform, we're gonna be messing with the position and scale. So go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to both of those. Then take these keyframes and then move them to roughly about the end here. Next, move your play to the very beginning of your adjustment layer and then change your position X value to three and your position Y value to eight and then change your scale value to 200. And essentially what we've done is just zoom in in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Now that's what Doc does in his videos, so that's what I'm doing for the tutorial. But if you want to zoom in on any part of your screen, it doesn't matter. Basically just change the first X and Y position keyframe value to whatever you need. Now after we've done this, we can go ahead and bring the drop down menu down for the scale and the position because we're going to have to mess with both of those graphs again. Scroll down a little bit and then you're going to select all of these keyframes, right click and go to temporal interpolation and then go to Bezier. Now, once we've done this, let's go ahead and start with the position keyframes. Uh, basically grab the circle here and drag it all the way down and then do the same for this left keyframe. And now what you're gonna wanna do is try to line up the peak of this graph with that 15 uh, keyframe value that we have for our directional blur. So to do that, basically you're just gonna grab these circles and then adjust it. So let's see, roughly about there is good. And keep in mind, we're gonna have to move this position keyframe and the scale keyframe too but uh, we're gonna have to move them over to the right so where it's like at the end of the adjustment layer. But see, still here, it's pretty close to that 15 keyframe, so we're fine. 
Now, once you've done that, go ahead and move down to your scale keyframe. Now you're gonna be messing with this bottom graph. So go ahead and grab it and try to line up these, uh, these lines here with this line on the right and then do the same with the left. And now we can go ahead and check our work. So to do that, what we're gonna do is grab our playhead and then move through our effect here. And we can see right here, this is not what we want. We don't want this black line because it kind of just like, it takes us out of the effect and doesn't make it look as clean. So what we're gonna have to do is adjust these keyframes that we were just messing with. Now what you're gonna wanna do is basically just go down to these lines that we were messing with a second ago and drag them over to the left or the right. Uh, let's see. And you're gonna wanna do these with both the scale and the position just to line them up pretty decently here. So if you move it to the left, we can see that the line gets a little bit bigger here and that's what we don't want. So we're just gonna take that line and move it to the right. And we can see as we scrub through our timeline and we look in our preview window that there are no black lines except for what we see them right here. So like I said, just readjust it a little bit more. Then just go through one more time and you're gonna check your work again. Now, once I was done, my peaks kind of moved around a little bit. So this is our 15 directional keyframe again. And then for our position, we have our peak here on the left. And then for our scale, we have our peak here over here on the right side of this uh, 15 keyframe. Now, once you've done that, you're done with that left adjustment layer. And now we can move on to our final adjustment layer, this top right one. Now to begin, we're gonna be messing with the chromatic aberrations and you're gonna wanna move your player to roughly about this area and then hit the stopwatch next to aberration red and aberration blue, and then also change your fall off distance to zero. Next, we're gonna change our aberration red value to five and our aberration blue value to one. Also, I forgot to mention, go ahead and uncheck this box where it says auto VR properties and then change your frame layout down to stereo's topic um, side by side. Now, once you've done that, we have our last thing we have to do, which is move your player to the very end and then change your aberration red and blue values both to zero. And once you've done that, you're done with your VR chromatic aberration. So we can minimize that and move on to transform. And the last thing we're gonna be messing with for this effect. So go ahead and drag your playhead to where this first keyframe is for the chromatic aberrations. Change your scale value to 300 and then go ahead to stopwatch next to position position. You can go ahead and move this keyframe to the very beginning because we're going to need one there later on, but make sure your playhead is still lined up for that very first uh, chromatic aberrations keyframe. And then you're going to change your position X value to 978 and your position Y value to 530. After you've done this, basically take your playhead, move it to roughly about this area and then change your position, uh, your position X value to 944 and then your position Y value to 544. After you've done this, one more keyframe, just move your player to the very end and hit this reset keyframe to get that zero value and to finish the effect out. And by finish the effect out, I mean we have to do one more thing. <laughs> so go ahead and select these two keyframes we have in the middle here for our position, right click, go to Tempo Interpolation and Bezier. And then here you go, here's that zoom shake transition. Like I said, it's about as difficult as that past transition, but the next one is easier than both of those. So the next one is going to be this speed ramp transition. So let's go ahead, hop in Premiere and get into our last effect. Now to begin this effect, what you're gonna do is go down to the project files in the bottom left, right click and we're gonna add a new item and go ahead and add in a color mat. And then make sure your color circle is in the top left corner of this gradient here, hit okay. And then we're just gonna name this black mat so we know what we're messing with. After you've done that, grab the black mat out of your project files and drag it onto your timeline here. Next, go ahead and grab two more adjustment layers out of your project files to put on the top and the bottom of that black mat. All right, now let's go ahead and go to the effects in the top right. And we're gonna look for an effect called VR Glow. Go ahead and drag that onto that top adjustment layer. Next, we're gonna be looking for an effect called Checkerboard. Then we're gonna drag that onto that bottom adjustment layer. Now to make sure we don't forget, go ahead and select this bottom adjustment layer really quickly and then go over to Lumetri Color on the right here. And then you're gonna go under Creative and go to Look and then you're gonna select the Fuji Intera 250D, whatever. I think this is just good color correction and adds a little bit more to this effect. Now to begin, go ahead and select that top adjustment layer and then the effects controls. Go ahead and hit change the Luma threshold to 0.3 and then your brightness to 0.5. Next, go ahead and check this box that says use tank color. Click this little white rectangle that'll bring up the color picker. Now for Doc's effect, he uses like a teal color, so that's what I'm gonna do. But if you want your speed ramp to be any color, just choose whatever you want. Go ahead and hit okay. And that's gonna be it for this top adjustment layer. Next, we're gonna go down to the black mat. Now what you're gonna do is start off by hitting this ellipse mask tool and then adjust these squares on your mask till it's roughly about this size here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this bottom adjustment layer so I don't have to look at that. And once you're done with that, change your mask feather to 300 and then change your mask opacity to uh, roughly about 95, somewhere around there. It's not like that big of a deal. And then go ahead and check this invert box. All right, and then lastly, come down to blend mode and then change it to soft light. Now we're done with that black mat, so we can move on to our bottom adjustment layer and we can go ahead and turn it back on so we can see what we're doing here. Now we have our bottom adjustment layer selected. So in the effects controls, we're gonna go down to the width and change it to four. 
We're gonna change our color to that teal color that we were just messing with or whatever color you chose to do for your effect. After we do this, change the opacity to 20 and then change our blending mode to add. All right, and then here you go. This is basically the overlay that's gonna be happening over our speed ramp, but to get it to where your clip is sped up, all you have to do, so let's say right now where my playhead is, this is where I wanna start that speed ramp. So what I do is hit my C key to bring up my cut tool, make a cut to the clip right there. And then let's say I want my clip to go back to normal speed, roughly about this area. I still have my cut tool selected and then left click again, right click on this middle clip that you cut out. Then you're gonna go to speed duration and you have two ways of adjusting this basically. So if you want your clip to be twice as fast, you're gonna go to speed and then change this value to 200. This will make the clip half as long because it's twice as fast, right? But you also have another option here. Let's say that you know how long you want your clip to be sped up for. So what you're gonna do is right click again, go back to speed and duration. And instead you're gonna go ahead and change this duration value. So let's say uh, instead of my clip being 3.1 seconds, I want it to be 2.1 seconds. And then Premiere will automatically adjust that percentage to whatever it needs to be. After you've done this, basically just grab your clip, back it up to where this clip cuts off again, and then trim down these top adjustment layers here to whatever you need, and that's it. So here you go, here's that speed ramp we just did. Like I said, it's a bit easier than the other ones, but I think it's a pretty cool one to do still overall. But that is going to be the final effect I'm covering in this video. And like I said earlier, if you haven't already, go ahead and make sure to check out that first Dr. Disrespect video I did. In that video, I covered his text, a couple of speed ramps, transitions, and stuff like that. But hopefully you guys found this video helpful, and if so, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I cover a lot of content on this channel that's focused on helping you guys make content the way that you want to make it. Also, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite effect was or maybe something else you want me to cover in a future video. And until next time, peace. Okay, for the fourth time of recording this video, let's try to have it fine. Perfectly fine. We're not going to have any corrupt files. We're not going to run out of space on my phone. Audio isn't going to be messed up. We're going to do it, and we're going to do it right for the fourth time. Four.